Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, your parkour instructor in the virtual world, and it's time for the next episode of me playing Mirror's Edge. Um, I hope you're excited, I'm not especially because this is generally considered the worst level in the game for a bunch of reasons that I will talk about at length. But before then, uh, a couple things. First off, remember to go follow me on Twitter so that you can... or Tumblr as well, it's fine. So that you can keep up with things like stream announcements. Um, I'm streaming regularly on Tuesdays and Friday... Fridays? Tuesdays and Fridays, I think. Might be Thursdays. Uh, that's what the schedule's for. So um, that is a Hollow Knight run and there are also random unscheduled streams that I announce in advance. Uh, also, I'm probably going to have to take a bit of a hiatus between the end of this uh, series and the start of the next series. The next series will be Transistor, as I've mentioned before. However, I'm being evicted and I don't have the time or energy to both do my research and prep for a new in-depth Let's Play before I am thrown out of my house. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately there's going to be a little bit of a break, probably a couple weeks in between times. My streaming schedule should be uninterrupted, but um, there might be general disruption as we move into the new flat. So anyway, um, finally, there was one other thing which I wanted to shout out, um, commenter Argonaut in my comments, especially in the comments of episode three, because they have made a lot of really insightful and useful comments that are just good to read and you should go read them. But are the, there's too much to actually flash up on screen and discuss here. So let's get started. Just charging in there recklessly, kiddo. That's Pope's killer, Mark. Yeah, well, there might be more heat out there. It's too risky to try to get to the boat by foot. You'll be spotted for sure. There must be some way to slip in undercover. So yeah, uh, there are a ton of reasons why this level is generally hated. Um, pretty much entirely loathed. Just ridiculed and absolutely uh, roasted by everyone who ever tries to play it. Also, it's interesting that um, Travis Burfield, aka okay, Ropeburn, apparently like was time for a little stowaway action face. Quick, before it goes. Apparently was rich enough to not only own a uh, private security company, but also apparently a shipping company that has enormous goddamn boats of this kind of size. Um, he was a pro wrestler. How did he get that rich? hell is in this boat anyway? No idea. Could be munitions, I guess. Might be to do with this Project Icarus. Look, head straight for the deck if that's where you saw this guy. Once you found your killer, get some answers and get out fast. Lots of blue traffic in the area, so get ready for a fight. Anyway, uh, welcome to the van. This is generally considered to be the longest and most irritating hidden loading screen in the game. Um, it's actually the holy grail of the speedrunning community is to find a way to skip this because it's like a minute and a half of uninterrupted van time. Um, also, there's a clear class disparity between the parcels at the back and the ones at the front. Nobody cares if you steal these. However, these, they get a nice locking grill. Um, anyway, so the long load time is one, one reason this level is disliked. Another we're about to see is the fact that it has a... Uh, preponderance of combat in tight enclosed spaces, which is where the combat of the game does absolutely does not shine, um, with several heavily armed individuals, which is also where it doesn't shine. And a lot of it is unskippable. So I'm going to try and do the, the quick way of getting past these guys. If it doesn't work, I will fight them all, which will take a lot longer. See, one of the tricks here is that um, because of the way the guns work, it's basically randomised whether or not someone targeting you, you will hit you. Which means that if you get lucky, you can sprint right through here um, and just springboard up straight up into- well, not springboard, springboard, but get up on here, get up on here. And then if enough of them miss you, you can actually hop straight up onto the next step in the rafters and get away. That has worked every single time I've tried it on my practice runs today, so I haven't actually been fighting these guys. Um, now I'll try the slightly slower way, which is to take out the first two guys, which isn't especially difficult. And then to 
uh, run past the other three guys and hope that there's not enough fire to knock you down. This sometimes works because it draws them further into your part of the level, which blocks their line of sight to the drain pipe you need to climb up. However, the guy with the heavy machine gun still can fire away on you. But we've made it. So, as you can see, um, you can do it the fast way, which has a fair chance of you dying, or the medium way, which has a reasonable chance, or the slow way, which is safer but requires you to do a lot of irritating combat. Unfortunately, this immediately following combat is not skippable because there is a, uh, a door that takes ages to open, and if you try and open it with guides left, they will just shoot you. So, as I've said before, the combat in this game is all about isolating individuals so that you can take them down while their buddies don't shoot you. Um, they do provide you with this convenient passageway to hide in, which is very useful. But, if you take more than 30 seconds, two more guys show up, which means that you tend to have to take out five guys in this pretty tight area where the machine gun man at the back has coverage to hit you. See, that's, that's another guy. I think there's usually two. I'm not sure if the other one's somewhere. Um, so, this kind of combat is antithetical to the... Uh, sort of physical themes of the game, because this is a game about speed and flow and momentum. Whereas the way you fight these guys, the only way to fight these guys, is to um, constantly hide, stop, peek around corners, lure them into places and set up your own little ambushes, which isn't necessarily a bad mechanic in and of itself, but it is just, it only fights the other mechanics of the game as they have been previously established. Now, in real life, never ever run directly at a man with a machine gun. Um, this may or may not be increasingly relevant as the future heads on. So, once you've taken those guys out, you have time to break open this door. Um, Argonaut pointed out that it might not be that every single time you have a long loading an a long animation like this, it's a loading screen. It might actually be the case that some of them are loading screens and some of them are not, and it's just, well, we already had a valve with animations applied, we don't want to spend development time on having a second, faster opening animation, so just use the same one. But, yeah, so, the uh, constant and um, unfair combat is one reason why this level is hated, because you... You are constantly presented with these arenas in which you can't really um, play to your own advantage and where you are facing a whole bunch of enemies and you don't really have any opportunity to skip it most of the time. Which is uh, not only, as I said before, antithetical to... Okay. That was my fault because I was looking in the wrong direction like a fool. But um, yeah, uh, there's, no, there's no easy way to separate them out. There's no easy way to to skip them. Um, essentially you have to keep stopping and starting and hiding and even then it's highly randomized whether or not you'll be successful because these combats are almost impossible to do without getting shot and you only can get hit a couple of times before you die. Much like in real life. I actually wonder if there's some kind of a potentially a bit of lore somewhere about how the police use futuristic rubber bullets that you know, bruise but don't penetrate or something. Um, because you do seem to be able to take quite a lot of hits for an unarmored human being. However, if you get hit more than once or twice, you do straight up die. So, who knows? Rick says he's got a runner in your area. Says they've reported a lot of activity on that boat. But he said what he thinks is your guy on the top deck. So, that brings me to the second point, which is that unlike a lot of the rooftop and, you know, office building, platforming throughout the game up until this point, um, almost all of the platforming is puzzle platforming, where you have to kind of figure out where in a complicated environment you're even supposed to go and then take the prescribed route to get there. It's more about looking around and figuring out where to go and how to get from one step to the next step, rather than instinctively flowing your way through a landscape naturally. Which, again, is not where the game shines. It is, in fact, the opposite of where the game shines. So, uh, shortly we are going to see the next reason why this level is generally disliked. But before I do that, when I get to the top of these steps... 
I will, um... Actually, I do have another complaint first. Namely, have you noticed that the ways that the... Oopsie daisy. The physics of these places are slightly more complex than a lot of the other parts of the game. These, um... There's all these greebly little details, and all of those details have collision. Which means that it's very easy to catch, much like in real life when sprinting through the innards of a ship, catch your foot on something like these sticky outy bits, and um, where you would in real life trip onto your face, you instead just lose all of your momentum, which again takes away the um, speed and flow of the game. So yeah, there's tons of tiny environmental details to catch yourself on and lose your momentum if you're not careful. Uh, but yes, so we are heading up to the first of two successive boss fights. In order to reach the boss, you have to successfully not get shot. Stay in cover and work your way towards them. Time to get some answers. And indeed, not get exploded by the explosive barrels that are everywhere. It's a lot more video gamey in the traditional sense. There aren't many places in the game where these explosive barrels are because what is this doom? Um, also, again, it suffers the problem of the kind of random getting shotness. If you are moving faster, you're a lot harder for the NPCs to hit, but it is still basically randomised. Anyway, a while back I mentioned that there are collectible bags in the levels which have been dropped off by other runners who've had to uh, not complete their missions. This is what those look like. I had intended to leave a few um, so that I could show them off as we went through the game, but when I was uh, when I was playing this the last time before I restarted my campaign, I had grabbed most of them and the couple I found I accidentally grabbed while doing prep. Anyway, time to go see if I can get past this without getting shot. So again, this breaks your flow because you have to pick cover in the environment and sprint between it. This should really be kind of a refreshing change from what you've been doing previously, but it feels bad and also unrealistic to just get shot a bunch of times and then hide and wait for your health to recover. It's something much more appropriate to a shooter of the kind that dice normally produce rather than this, which is a game that kind of emphasises the fragility of your form in most other respects. So um, the fact that your form is only fragile if you receive successive hits, it doesn't really lend itself to that same feeling. Anyway, once you get to this sort of closeness, um, the assassin starts shooting at you with a handgun instead of the rifle, and then it's time for a kung fu boss fight. Now, this opponent has a strong focus on counters and um, chaining attacks together. It's quite difficult unless you rely on punishing those high kicks. Uh, almost all of the attacks of these high kicks, the thing about the high kicks is that you can duck under them and punch them in the crotch. This, <laughs> if you do it right and you're not having to focus on talking, it actually ends up looking very much like I'm sure that there is an action comedy movie at some point where there's just like a really tense, you know, Jason Bourne style fight except that it consists entirely of the hero just constantly hitting the other guy in the balls. Um, anyway, so there's an interesting thing about this chase sequence, which is the it is the only one of the several chase sequences we've had so far where your opponent does not wait for you. Mechanically, they do still wait for you, but think back to Jackknife in one of the earliest episodes, and indeed to the previous chase with um, this specific assassin figure. If you were too slow, you would see them waiting for you to catch up. I said at the time that this was the math uh, not mathematically, narratively relevant, and uh, it is, because as you can see here, they're genuinely trying to get away from you. Again, they have a uh, pre-programmed -pro pre um, animations that none of this is uh, organic, like the pathfinding of the gun-firing enemies that you fight throughout the game, um, which you can tell very easily because if you play this twice in a row, you will see it make all of the same movements uh, in very quick succession. But still, we can learn from this that uh, Jackknife wanted you to catch him. He wanted you to catch up with him so that he could give you information. Why did he want to give you that information? To manipulate you. Similarly, why did this person try and uh, let you catch up with them in the mall to lead you directly into an ambush? So what does it say that they are in fact definitely running from you this time? Well, we'll learn eventually. Unless I die here, which is not impossible. 
Because... Yeah, there we go. Um, so what happened there is that if you complete the third hit on a three-hit combo, they always catch you and counter-attack. If you come back from the checkpoint, you have to approach more carefully because um, they just happily can shoot you as they please. I'm not really sure why they don't just shoot you at close range. Especially since all of your parries are based on um, them uh, trying to melee you with the weapon instead of them just shooting you. But yeah, if you make a couple of standard punches in succession, instead of uh, getting the combo off, you actually get counterattacked by this target. That said, that little cutscene is brutal and I love it. So, who is the identity of this mysterious figure? You'll have to come back next time and find out, because uh, this is an inconvenient point for the way I've structured these episodes of chapter start cutscene and then chapter, because the chapter start cutscene of the next chapter immediately follows on that event and we discover who this mysterious figure is. But, you know, cliffhangers are useful for audience retention, so I will see you all in a couple days, or immediately afterwards if you're watching this uh, from the playlist. So that's all from me, I'll catch you later. I hope you enjoyed this episode, please remember to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description. Thank you so much for watching.